and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. This is part two, following on from the part one, which was going over the cooling system. And in this episode, we'll go over why I don't think the blower unit in the Audi A6 2.7T is going to work with my chassis. While stripping down the new donor car, I found that most of the heater matrix air conditioning unit is actually inside the car. It's on the other side of the bulkhead. And this is the inlet for the blower system, which is all the way over to the far side of the car, which would be the left side. Now, I think that is going to be a problem. Now if we take a look at my prototype chassis, this is going to be right in the way of the Audi A6 2.7T aircon unit. Now I won't know for sure until I strip that car down and cut the bulkhead out and do all sorts of measurements, but I'm going to have to try and figure something out because I think that's going to be a problem. If you've been following along, then you'll know that I'm also stripping down a 2.7T Audi Estate. And the idea is, is to use the V6 twin turbo out of that, get some big power and put it in the back of this thing. Well, not this, this is the prototype, but there will be a turbo build coming up. There'll be a new car being built. Anyway, this is the radiator from that car. And it only has one fan. Unfortunately, the second fan is part of the core support on the, uh, the, the radiator support. So it's not part of the shroud. In fact, there is no shroud on this one. So that's a problem. So that one, that radiator in there, twin fans with a shroud, good to go. This one, nope. But there's another problem. Let me just turn it around. Right, I'll bring the camera in so you can uh, take a closer look. But this, these are where the uh, hoses go. Now, on the 2.7T, it doesn't use like Jubilee clips or hose clamps with a screw you know, with a screw uh, that can be tightened and loosened. This is a clip style. Hose. So the hose goes on and then you put a clip in. That's not very good if you're trying to do a DIY build. This is a factory thing, so that's going to be an issue. Now, you know, if you've been following along, then you probably heard me going on that I want to put like 650 brake horsepower through this thing, which, you know, if I can get the money and get the funds and all the rest of it, yes, I'd love to do that. So, I don't think this radiator is going to work anyway, because if I'm putting that amount of power through it, I've got to at least probably double the volume of water that's inside this radiator. Plus, this radiator doesn't even have a drain plug. So, putting all those things into consideration, I think I'm going to have to go with a custom performance aluminium radiator. Let's start off by talking about the different types of radiators. Now, this example we have here from Scylla, this is a plastic aluminum radiator. What it has is plastic tanks and an aluminum core. Okay, this last example is an all aluminum radiator. Now, this particular one is from Champion Cooling, and we're going to be installing this in our Project Integra here in just a couple of minutes. This one is a three core radiator. It's going to help cool the engine as soon as we get that turbocharger installed. Now, the advantage that this has over the plastic aluminum, of course, all welded seams, no crimps and no epoxy holding anything together. It's very important that your cooling system is upgraded whenever you create more horsepower. Okay, now we've got our radiator uninstalled. We're going to go ahead and mount our fan to our new Champion radiator and bolt it back into place. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to unbolt our fan and bolt it to our champion radiator. Now we're only going to use one fan. The reason we're only going to use one is we know that we're going to put a turbo kit on our Project Integra, so we need that extra space over there for room for the turbo. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to bolt this on first, then I'm going to put the hose on last. The reason that I do that last is that way I can make sure I have it clocked correctly so it fits right in when we're done with our install. Now they look great and it's going to solve a whole load of problems. Unfortunately it will add to the budget. And also there's another problem. If I turn this around, this here is the condenser radiator for the air conditioning which bolts into the OEM radiator. So. An off-the-shelf aluminium performance radiator isn't going to work. I'm going to have to get one that's custom made so this can be bolted to it. Or I get rid of this altogether and then I get a custom condenser radiator. But that's also adding to the budget. Yeah, more problems. So it looks like the steering rack, the intercoolers and now the radiator isn't going to work on the turbo build. Anyway, let's get back to the prototype. So, as you understand, the radiator is now here, the front of the car, like on the original donor car. The heater matrix and the blower is also in the front of the car. However, the engine is all the way back there. So, you know that the hoses for the heater matrix are actually tied into this front radiator here, so what did I do with the hoses at the back? Now on the original Audi A6, the heater matrix plugged into the back of the engine around here. I'll bring the camera in in a sec. So all I had to do was get some heater hose and just loop it. And it's uh, deep in here. Alright, get the camera for you. Here's the heater hose and it loops into the back of the engine deep inside there. Can't quite make it out. And it just loops round through here. <sighs> now one thing you need to do when you're building your own cooling system is to make sure the fill-up point, in this case it's an expansion tank, is at the highest possible point. Now, as you can see, or hopefully you can see, here's the top of the engine. Actually, the engine's a little lower than that. This is just a plastic cover. But the engine's about this height, and this is the fill of the expansion tank on this cooling system. And this was also taken from the original Audi A6 C4. Now, a bit of trivia for you. This expansion tank, which is an Audi one, is also the one used on a TVR Cerbera. So if it can handle a 4.2 V8 with about 380 brake horsepower, then this should handle pretty much anything. So to recap, this cooling system on the prototype comes straight from the donor car. It uses the original radiator with its twin fans and shroud. It uses the expansion tank, there's two hoses that run down the center of the car and there's a loop at the engine to bypass where the heater matrix used to go. Pretty simple stuff and this works, the fans come on and this car doesn't overheat. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you a few pictures of the chassis in its raw state before I stripped it down ready for painting. So we push the chassis out onto my driveway. Now this is a little bit ahead of time because at this stage the pedals were done and also the dashboard was done. Now I'm going to cover those in another episode um, so bear with me. But at this stage this is a rolling chassis without wiring but it's almost ready to fire up. 
Now there's no roll cage on here because at this stage I hadn't fitted the roof. So I don't know what shape the roll cage should be. So anyway, so there it is on the driveway. Here's another angle. Oh, you might just see in the top corner there, there's my old TVR Cerbera, which was the best car I ever owned and also the worst one. So, next picture. Yeah, this is from the rear. You can see the engine and gearbox. Obviously, there's no exhaust at this point. You can see the uh, fuel tanks and you can make out the dashboard. Here is a shot that I took really far back and I'm trying to compare it with the height of a normal car. This is a uh, Vauxhall Astra van and you can see how low it is. Okay, it's, it's sitting a little lower there because the, I hadn't set the suspension up but it gives you an idea just how low this thing is. Here's another angle, you can make out the BMW wheels, they're just rolling wheels just for mock-up. You can see the air filter on the side there. Uh, there's a shot from the front of my mate there checking his Facebook things or whatever <laughs> on his phone. There's a close-up of the dashboard. Now this picture should give you an idea that the dash on this and the steering and the pedals and everything is mounted to the chassis. It's super strong. It is not mounted to any fiberglass. And you can see that in there there's a white board. That's a temporary board so that I could mock up the pedals and the markings on there. I don't know if you can quite make it out, but there's sort of like a strip that goes along and there's two sort of black markings. Well, that's where my heels are, so I can get heel and toe set up with my pedals. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, we'll do that in another episode. There's another shot from behind, you can make out the engine and the gearbox and the drive shafts and stuff. There's a side shot. Um, at this stage, obviously, again, there's no roll cage at this stage, so if some of you say this chassis doesn't look strong enough, this isn't the finished chassis, this is the raw chassis. There's a roll case to go in, so that's to be done at a later stage. And there we go again, that's the last photo back where it was on the driveway. So that was the chassis in its raw state. Now the car was stripped down, the engine was taken out and the whole thing was then cleaned and painted. Uh, we'll cover that in another episode, but I think that'll do. So that's detailing the cooling system. It looks simple, but there's a lot of maths and engineering behind it. So, but if you follow a, a few basic rules, you shouldn't really get it wrong. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.